a child presenting with fever associated with joint pain, not being relieved for days, and also by some of the home remedies. This can be because of osteomyelitis. So what is osteomyelitis? Osteomyelitis is the infection of the bone and bone marrow caused by the microorganisms and also sometimes by the pyogens. So what is the causative agent for osteomyelitis? Most commonly Staphylococcus gram-positive, less commonly Streptococcus and also sometimes Pneumococcus. Uh, yes, immunosuppressant people are most likely to get this. Okay, so osteomyelitis is divided into two, acute and chronic. Acute is further divided into two, primary and secondary. What happens in primary osteomyelitis is the invasion of the agent is through hematogenous source and a male child is affected more compared to a girl child. Secondary osteo, um, osteomyelitis, I was about to say osteoarthritis, which is completely different. Okay, so secondary osteomyelitis, uh, the invasion of the agent is through open fractures and even sometimes during the surgery. Uh, yes, so I think I've already told about it that immunosuppressant people are most likely to get osteomyelitis and the lovable place for these agents to invade is the throat and the chest. Now moving forward, let us talk about pathoanatomy of osteomyelitis, like where does these uh, agents get invaded through and which is the most favorite site in the bone, how do they survive and what happens to the bone after the invasion. So all these comes in pathoanatomy. The picture will be clearly shown on the screen. Do follow that and also do follow to what I say. Usually, metaphysis of long bone is affected because metaphysis is a highly vascularized zone and the vessels in this zone are arranged in the form of a loop. The blood stasis resulting from such an arrangement is responsible for the metaphysis being favorite site for the bacteria to settle. Thus, common site for osteomyelitis. In some joint parts of the metaphysis is intra-articular so that infection from the metaphysis can spread to the joint causing pyogenic arthritis. The host cells harbors the infection. This leads to bo bone destruction and production of pus and inflammatory exudate. The pus travels along the medullary cavity and causes toxic thrombosis of the blood vessels. The supply to a segment of the bone therefore is cut off. The pus travels along the central canal and comes out through the bony cortex and it forms subperiosteal abscess. The periosteum is thus lifted off the underlying bone, resulting in damage to the periosteal blood supply to a part of the bone. There is toxic thrombosis of blood vessels. These dead bones are called sequestra. Due to the elevation of periosteum, this is, there is formation of new bone called involucrum. The abscess, if unattended, burst out of the skin, forming a discharging sinus. Epiphyseal plate is a barrier for the spread of pus, but at times, it may be affected by the inflammatory process and also in child below two years, the epiphysis is intraarticular, so the pus goes inside the joint. Example in the shoulder. So that was all about pathoanatomy of osteomyelitis. Now let us move more forward uh, and learn the clinical features of osteomyelitis. What does a uh, what does a child with osteomyelitis present with? First and foremost is extreme joint pain, fever, uh, not wanting to eat food, dehydration. Yes, a child, uh, the child feels very much thirsty if he or she is having osteomyelitis. Obviously, he most commonly as male child is mostly affected compared to the girl child. There is also swelling and redness not only to the affected joint or the bone, but also in the associated joints. 
there is rise in temperature swelling overall pain there is a generalized pain and generalized feeling of weakness malaise lethargy the child will not allow you to touch the limb the child will not uh, want to move out he will act very differently like very lethargic and weak and he will be uh, stagnant on the bed only not wanting to do anything so yes these are the basic clinical features with uh, a child with osteomyelitis shows so what are the other diseases which can be confused with osteomyelitis uh, the symptoms which are common in other diseases are which is known as the differential diagnosis it can be confused with hemophilia septic arthritis acute rheumatic fever and acute rheumatic arthritis now the investigations done to confirm the osteomyelitis is firstly in the blood you see that there is raised neutrophils there is polymorph leukocytosis raised uh, esr elevated c reactive protein uh, and yes mri is asked to done as it detects osteomyelitis very early which is important as osteomyelitis can lead to various complications technetium bone scan is also done and aspiration of the pus is also done to investigate the osteomyelitis so what are the treatment which can be done for osteomyelitis is firstly it is rest do not move the limb immobilize the limb so splintage is done later uh, yes uh, iv I IV antibiotics is very much important for the causative agents and if not cured by all these also especially by the IV antibiotics surgery is needed to be done to prevent further complications now complications what complications can be led because of osteomyelitis as septic arthritis septicemia and pathological fracture which is very common as a uh, because of osteomyelitis the growth end plate gets disturbed because of which fracture is very common so when a child presents with fever joint pain which is not being relieved for days and the child is acting very weird because of the pain do not neglect all these symptoms and do go and visit to a doctor thank you